Hi, and welcome back to the Power BI Custom Visuals class. And in this module, we're going to be looking at the icon map. The icon map is an interesting map in that it allows you to not only plot out points on a map, but you can also plot out a range of values. So let's say, for example, you want to show where you went from a cruise ship or a plane ride from one city to the other. You can actually plot out one point to another and show the direction at which it moved. So you're going to see multiple latitude and longitude options show up in here, and that's going to be wise because you can not only plot out where the airplane is right now, let's say, but you can also plot out where it started and where it's going all with inside the map. The other unique thing about this map is you can also plot out an icon. So it's called an icon map because you can plot out an icon similar to what you see on the right-hand side where you see flags of different regions. You can also plot out any kind of icon you want. You just have to have a URL, so it does have to be in your data set, and it does have to be a URL, and each row can represent a different icon. Uh, you can also have some integration into Mapbox. Mapbox was a, a tool that we mentioned in a previous module. There was a Mapbox custom visual, but there's also a lot of other things you can do with Mapbox if you go to mapbox.com. And then there's also some integration into Open Weather Map. Open Weather Map is a cool place you can go. There's an API that you can tap into and a subscription you can sign up for that allows you to actually plot out weather data on your map. So if you want to see uh, if it's raining right now, is it cloudy, the things like that you can actually bring in into your map by tapping into the Open Weather API. Now you do, of course, have to have a subscription to that and an API key, as well as the same thing for Mapbox. So as long as you have those things, you can tap into those different integrations using the icon map. All right, so let's go ahead and walk you through how you can use the icon map. And in this example, what we're gonna be doing is looking at cruise ship data. We're not necessarily gonna be plotting out where it's going, but we wanna just plot out where it's at right now. So let's go hop into a demonstration here and look at this cruise ship data. All right, so in this example, we're gonna start, of course, by pulling in the data that we need. So I'm gonna go up to the get data section and we'll select Excel. And the data we're going to be pulling in is this cruise ship locations. So I'll open that. And we'll select cruise ships. And go ahead and load that in. Now loading that in, you should see the fields get added into our data model on the right-hand side. You also see the screen in the middle indicating that's occurring. But you can see the fields that we have available to us on the right-hand side. Our next step, of course, is to bring in the icon map itself, which you can do by going to the marketplace. Up in the top ribbon, you'll find underneath custom visuals from marketplace. So we'll select that. And we're going to search to find this more easily or quicker, search for icon, and you should see icon map show up on the top. So we'll go ahead and add the icon map in, and you'll see that get added into our visualization pane on the right-hand side. And we can go ahead and select that to make that visual available and on our design surface. So I'm going to make this a bit larger. Now inside of this, we're going to place in here what kind of category are each of these data points represented by. Well, the categories that we're looking at are actually ship names. So each of these are a unique ship. And then we can place in the icon, which you have the icon right here. I have an icon field, which is a URL. You can go look at the URL for which it's coming from. It's just an icon of a cruise ship. And then we're going to bring in the latitude and longitude. It looks like the longitude is first, and then the latitude is second here. And then last, before you actually see this implement anything, you'll notice that it's focused in on London. But before we can actually see anything used in here, we need to bring in the size of the icon. So I have this kind of randomized. The size here is actually randomized. But in this case, what you can see is once we drag in the icon size, we can see where all of these cruise ships are around the world. And you can, of course, zoom in if you wanted to. You can use the zoom that you have in the top of the screen here. And you can go focus in on just certain areas of the world. Say, for example, you really wanted to look in the Caribbean over here. You can try to zoom in on that area and see all the cruise ships that exist in those areas. You can, of course, hover above any one of those icons, and it'll actually give you some information about each one of those individual cruise ships. So you're seeing quite a bit of information here. You can kind of hover above, and you can see where each of these cruise ships are at any point in time. Now, you should note there are a lot of other individual latitude and longitudes that you can plug in. And the difference between those latitude and longitudes is they actually allow you to plug in where you're going, where you've been kind of thing. So if you want to see progress of where you're at on a path, this is a great way to do it. You can have the solid line perhaps be where you've already gone, and maybe the dotted line, latitude and longitude, be where you're going. So if you knew the coordinates of where you're going and where you're coming and where you're at now, you could certainly use that by having a line show and demonstrate that fact. Now, if you were using those lines, you're going to see there's a few other customizations you can do underneath the format paintbrush. We'll talk a little bit about those, but we actually don't have a scenario where 
we have lines in ours. You can also change the line width based on a field inside of your data set and the color saturation. So the line actually can have different colors and you can change the rotation of the icons that you're using. So you can see the icons we're using here and you can of course hover above them and get these tooltips. There's some tooltip settings that we'll see as well. So if we go underneath the format paintbrush, you'll see underneath the background layers, there's a few things that you can change. So you can change the background itself. So underneath here, if you wanted to, you can actually change the different backgrounds and see what different layouts might look like. So here's some different examples of what the backgrounds are that you can change to. And if you were using the map box capabilities, you could actually go and use some of the map box visuals. Now you'll notice that this isn't working right now for map box because you would need to kind of plot in here your map box access token. So if you pl plopped in your uh, access token for map box, you would then be able to leverage and use the map box options that are seen here. But there are still, even without that, quite a few different options that you can choose from. You can see these are the different ones that are available. I'm going to go with the standard one for this for now. You can also turn on the daylight curve. This is really interesting because this actually shows where in the world you're seeing daylight. So everywhere, obviously, where it's light is daylight. Anywhere where it's dark is night. So you're able to see here very easily where the timing is of each of these that are occurring. So it looks like all the ones here that are in the Caribbean are in a light time zone. You can also, if you had, again, open, uh, placed in the Open Weather API uh, key, you'd be able to turn on things like clouds and see clouds shown here, and you could see the wind shown and precipitation and things like that. That's all relative to the fact that you would have to plug in the Open Weather API first. If you had an open weather API, which does require a subscription, you could then see that shown here. You can also uh, reveal under map on highlight, when basically what this allows you to do is kind of, again, integrate in with those other API features and kind of uh, deepen the, the capabilities of this. And again, I'm not, I'm not plugging in either, any of those APIs here, so we're not getting those added benefits. If we go underneath the line section, again, this has to do with whether or not we had a line that showed where we're going, where we're at, where, we're, uh, where we came from. You could actually turn on and change the color of those lines. You could change the width of those lines all within inside of the line section. The tooltip section is also nice here. If you wanted to, you could affect the tooltips that you see here. So we're highlight highlighting the tooltip that's uh, on the screen right now. And if I didn't want to show the ship name or if I didn't want to show the size icon, the icon size, I could actually turn off the show size here and maybe just show the ship name if I wanted to. Okay, keep moving along. Underneath the data point section, you have quite a bit here that you can work with. This allows you to kind of deal with whether or not your map auto zooms. So if you want to turn off that auto zoom, you might have noticed a few moments ago that it auto zoomed out. You can actually turn off the auto zoom, and then that way, anytime you make changes to the map, it'll stay in a certain area. So if you really want to focus just in one particular area, you can still do that by turning off auto zoom, and anytime anything changes with your map, it won't necessarily auto zoom out or auto zoom in. So that's a nice capability if you don't want it to do that. You also have the capability to zoom in on uh, one item. So this would likely be something if you, for example, had a slicer over here and you selected a value and wanted it to zoom in on just one item here. You can also kind of deal with whether or not you want it to stack the icons, to show the labels. You can do a lot of fun stuff here. You can uh, tell it how do you want to handle the labels. The colors that you see here have to do with if you actually were not using a icon URL like I'm using. So for example, if you were using just um, data points without icons, it would still show the values in a circle and you could tell it what color you wanted those to appear in. You can also uh, affect then the color of the, trans the, the opacity, I should say, of those circles. So it would put little circles on all the data points instead of ships. And then if I wanted to use that, then I would, of course, need to uh, tell it what kind of opacity do I want on that. That's really it for this one. It's a, there's a lot of interesting little settings in here. A lot of them have to do whether or not you're going to tap into these different APIs that are available to you. But overall, it's a pretty interesting visual that allows you to be able to plot out icons, maybe show a beginning and an end point of those, those locations that you want to see. Uh, and it's a great way to be able to map out data and, again, have different capabilities with backgrounds that you can feed in if you're a subscriber to some of those different features like Mapbox or the open weather API there as well. I hope you guys enjoyed this one today. This is a very short one, but it uh, looks like this is a fun one that you can work with, and we look forward to showing you our next custom visual in our next module.